I wanted to talk today about a technique that I use uh, when I brainstorm videos. And like most techniques, they're simply the structure uh, on which you get to hang the ornaments of your imagination. They're not uh, guidelines specifically, but I think of a lot of these kinds of techniques as techniques that you use to get unstuck so that you can go back to letting your unconscious mind guide you. So there's three things that I think about when I start working on a concept or a video and I'm just trying to flesh out what's available uh, within the concept. And those three things are specificity, scale, and surprise. Specificity has to be broken down a little bit further. There's two kinds of specificity uh, that I think are important. And the first is specificity of observation, and the second is specificity of experience. And like I said before, these are reminders. They're reminders when you're stuck uh, to focus on certain things to, to loosen you up. So the first one is specificity of observation. And that really means that whenever you're describing something or even thinking about describing something, you are trying to get as specific as you can about that observation. And the first uh, thing that I do when I think about specificity of observation is to, to think about all of the things around a subject matter that would be obvious to another person who is making a similar video and write them all down and then throw them all away. So let's take a scenario and we'll use something like uh, going to a Starbucks for a coffee. And uh, so the challenge is to come up with some kind of a, a video around that experience or, or even you know, a piece of writing around that experience. I haven't actually thought about this, so you and I are on the same footing here. But with specificity of observation, the kinds of things that I would throw away would be the idea that baristas are all actors, for example. That seems kind of like a placeholder, a trope. Uh, or uh, ordering some ridiculous long string uh, of words uh, joined together, the mega non-fat latte, blah, blah, blah. Or even the color green in the context of Starbucks. Or uh, things like, you know, having to get your coffee fix or else <laughs> you're, you're not going to make it through the day. All of those, I would say, would be like very top level basic observations that probably uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to use because I feel like when you use uh, those kinds of observations, they're kind of placeholders and they don't really capture imagination or even attention. Uh, and uh, they, they sort of just drift away into the media. When I think about this kind of specificity, I, I would think about letting my mind kind of wander over the entirety of, of that space and try to find little tiny details uh, that you know immediately kind of pop into my head that I might have noticed just for a moment. For example, like even the packaging, uh, the way that coffee is packaged with that little strip of tape uh, and that beautiful tight crimped roll that you can never ever get back uh, once you open the package or the font that's on the name tags or those little cups of sturdy f straws that, that, that sit in the corner or that weird fine powder mist that's at the end of the grinder. Um, all of those things uh, are, are not as obvious details and not necessarily usable, but uh, I think start pointing me in, in better directions uh, to, to look. So specificity of experience is the second kind of specificity, and that is a reminder to think about the way that I feel uh, in that scenario or when I'm thinking about that scenario, or even uh, the, the way that I feel when I'm making uh, the media itself. So in the case of the coffee shop, it could be uh, you know, when you hold the door open for someone and then they walk past you and don't check in with you uh, when, when they, you know, basically cut you in line out of your kindness. Or for me, sometimes it's the alienation of, of standing there uh, with a whole bunch of strangers and we're just kind of standing still and waiting and not really being able to talk to people. Uh, or fighting over a plug. Uh, and you know, kind of getting angry or, or strange, or in the case of like even uh, you know thinking about these concepts themselves. Right now, I'm having the experience of of being slightly afraid that I'm alone in these feelings, uh, and 
<laughs> you know, um, I don't know, <laughs> I feel like a little bit of a weirdo. So those two kinds of specificity are, are, are like writerly tools. The first one lets you get into the language and the, and the specificity of dis dis description. And then the second one is just a reminder that your experience counts. And in many cases, uh, your experience is the only thing that you're an expert on. Uh, and, and can be incredibly grounding, especially when you get overwhelmed in a subject uh, and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're learning more and more about it and, and trying to cover all the bases and you're putting yourself up against experts uh, on that subject uh, matter. Uh, in those moments, it's awesome to kind of revert back to the fact that, you know, you feel like you don't know what you're talking about. It's a great, actual, valid thing to bring up in the media and a pretty amazing opportunity to be absolutely right. So the second main category uh, that I think about is scale. And scale is just a reminder that, and this was something that I, I heard, I think, when I went to like a clown class. Yes, I did. Um, which is that life is never lived in medium. Uh, life is kind of lived on the extremes of very big and very small. And so it's, it's a reminder to, with almost Every aspect of what you're thinking about, whether it's uh, you know conceptually, or whether it's in the way that you're actually uh, thinking about the shot or the audio or anything, that there is something called big and something called small. And if you don't explore or at least think about those two options, um, you're not really going to know what the range of possibilities is. So putting it into the coffee shop, you could think uh, that maybe big close-ups just changing the scale of the kind of shots that you have, uh, changing the scale of the kind of action that you would have, maybe from extreme yellingness to, I really like the idea of a very, very soft-spoken barista. That's pretty funny to me. Um, but also on the conceptual side, let's say that we take that single plug that uh, people are fighting for. A medium approach would be three or four people uh, fighting for that real estate. But you could also think, what would it be like if every single person in the store was all vying for it? Um, or uh, on the other hand, you know, thinking about this, like how small this could be, uh, I almost think about one person with a bunch of technology that's kind of competing or like the, you know, the, the phone is competing with the laptop, is competing with something else that you're char you know, charging, and then there's like a, a kind of a little mini drama that's playing out inside your own head uh, over what gets to use that, that uh, plug. Remember, I'm just thinking about this for the first time, just like you. The last category that I think about is surprise. And this one might seem like the most obvious one, but I think it's not so obvious. What I think about when I think about surprise is that almost everything that you do has a rhythm and the rhythm gets established often without you knowing it. Um, for example, if you listen to yourself talk, you'll, if you record yourself or something like that, you'll notice that you have very, very specific rhythms. And often people, when they speak in public, get into a pattern of speaking in the same exact way. And these patterns can crop up all over the place, not just in tone of voice, but length of shot that you use. Um, it could be even in the rhythm of jokes. Uh, if you get into a sort of set up, reveal, set up, reveal, set up, reveal, that is a rhythm. And eventually that rhythm becomes a hallmark of the piece. And I think that there's a pattern of expectation uh, and release that in and of itself kind of starts to wash out because we, we tend to sort of stop listening to patterns once we've identified them. Um, so the challenge is to identify as many rhythms as possible in all facets of the media that you're making uh, and then break them. It's a little hard to give examples of surprise in this coffee shop scenario because usually you need some sort of media to work off of to identify patterns. But I mean, I think about uh, the experiences that I <laughs> seem to be drawn to in the earlier example of uh, specificity and most of the experiences that I was, uh, was drawn to had to do with frustration and alienation and how hard it is. 
Uh, and so, you know, an easy way to break that uh, pattern would be to just focus on something that had to do with sheer joy or just an unexpected amount of generosity uh, from someone who, you know, brought in 50 extension cords for every single person uh, in the space. So I guess surprise is a reminder that left turns are okay, that, that it's, that regardless of what you're working on, that, uh, you know, if a, if a part of your brain kind of starts feeling stagnant, um, that it's okay to look in almost every possible direction uh, to break to break a pattern. And you don't have to do it for very long. It can be just one moment. But those surprise moments, whether it comes from, uh, you know, just a very small thing like the length of a shot or the size of text uh, breaking, you know, a kind of medium pres presentation or even uh, the kind of motion that you're doing uh, within within a shot uh, can have a huge impact and it can draw people back into the into the movie. It can draw people back into the thing. And that reminds me of something else, which is that on the specificity of experience, one really fun trick is when you are creating a piece of media, for me it's video, uh, you watch the video near uh, the end uh, of the process and then see how you react to it and you might get drawn to a, a something that happens on this on the screen like you might notice something that you didn't notice before uh, like a fly that lands somewhere and literally calling that out putting some text on the screen with an arrow to the fly uh, is a kind of magic because most likely the audience is going to pick it up and to have that uh, moment of um, I don't know, a, a joy name experience is, uh, can be pretty amazing. But like I said, these are placeholders. Um, there are things to use when you get stuck or there are things that I use when I get stuck because when I'm in that space, which I think most of us get into when we're making things and, and I don't know, little threads appear out of nowhere and you pull on them and you tie them together. That's a, it's a non-rational process. I don't think that it follows these rules. Um, but when you're lost, it's nice to have a sign pointing you in the right direction.